House of Burgesses. Anytime you start a venture or organize a group, hey, hey you, you have to institute some rules. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Otherwise, your brand spanking new treehouse can quickly devolve into a treehouse of horrors. <laughs> it goes without saying, but we'll say it anyway. <laughs> that if you're gonna start your own country, you're gonna want to have rules up the wazoo. Huh? And you're gonna need a governing body to enforce and uphold those rules. Because not too many nations have had success with the free-for-all approach. Once American colonists realized that they needed one of those government thingamabobs, uh -oh. the House of Burgesses was formed. It was established by a company called the Virginia Company that had previously been involved with establishing settlements in the New World. Hey, come on! These guys had their hands in everything. <laughs> the Virginia Company also came up with the Headright System, which was not an early GPS prototype. The Headright System offered those considering a move to the New World 50 acres of land if they took the leap. Way to wave that carrot in front of their noses. Please? Most of the funding for the House of Burgesses came from wealthy capitalists who hoped to double their net worth by investing in New World settlements and goods. The Burgess was the name given to the elected representatives from each town. Oh, yeah. But those representatives were usually members of the gentry. Oh, hello there. The wealthy investors who had a ton of influence. Ha, ha, ha. I'm so rich. For the most part, the towns were comprised of lower-class farmers. Well, howdy do there. Although some of their co-workers were even lower class. Hello, my name is Gregory. Ah, the con! The house adapted a form of government called English common law, in which representatives were chosen from the large settlements or plantations. I volunteer. The House of Burgesses was the first government system of its kind in North America. <coughs> If you don't count the Indians. Why not? No one else did. Hey. Anyway, the three parties that met to decide all things important were the governor, who was crown appointed, the councilman, and the burgess. Oh, yeah. You could only vote if you were a white male over the age of 17. But we're sure the law was totally arbitrary. They probably spun a wheel or something. So the colonist's new system was certainly different from back in merry old England, but it wasn't actually that different. Yeah, England had the whole royalty thing going, but their government was actually separate from the constitutional monarchy. Look at me, I'm a butterfly. The early American government's ideals were reflected in the formation of its founding documents. The house didn't last long though. It supported rebellion against the monarchy back in the motherland. Oh, fiddle faddle off with it! Even with their own government, the colonists were still living in what was technically a colony of England. And for some reason, England wasn't too keen on all this uh, uprising talk. Uh, this is awkward. The House of Burgess may have died, but its famous alumni lived on. Among them are many of our founding fathers. Sadly, most of them are no longer around to attend the reunion.